The Carry On Gang got that loving feeling in 1970 and laughed their audience all the way up the aisle. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my cult movie podcast. Bears, please. Yes, everyone's at it these days. The birds, the bees, and those hilarious carry-on characters. Why don't you go down front, sir? You'll see better. In the most laughable love-in of a lifetime. I have to vet them, don't I? Vet? Oh, Is that the new word for it? I can't fix them up with the right partners until I find out what they do. And how. They live. Mm. Like the young widow at the tobacconist. You must have vetted her at least 50 times. Mm. 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 Oh, good. Company. Oh, I'm fed up with this. I might as well be back home. Peter Rogers and Gerald Thomas invite you to carry on loving. We'll be bloody lucky if we do, mate. Because love, they say, makes the world go round and round and round. Hello, treasured listener, and welcome to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Love is in the air. Carry On Loving, 1970. To say I love the Carry On movies is a bit of an understatement. Despite any flaws they may have, they remain a tonic. Carry On Loving was the 20th movie in this boisterous cinematic series. In a sense, its story seems right up to date. What with it being about the trials and tribulations of computer dating? Well, to call it computer dating here, is a bit of a stretch, since the machine used by the Wedded Bliss Agency is shown to be fake, but hey-ho. The legendary Sid James and Hattie Jakes star as Sidney Bliss and Sophie Plummett, a bickering couple who pretend to be married so that they can put on a convincing front for their matchmaking business. We then meet a succession of individuals looking for commitment, for differing reasons. Take Percival Snooper, for example. Played by the great Kenneth Williams, he's a confirmed bachelor who can't convince anyone in his position as a marriage guidance counsellor. He feels being married would give him more credibility. And then there's the likeable Bertram Muffet, who's portrayed by Richard O'Callaghan. In the sort of role usually taken by Jim Dale, the sweet, nerdy, virginal Bertie is the sort of chap who has making aeroplanes out of milk bottle tops as a major hobby. We also have the pleasingly brash Terry Philpot looking for love. This part was taken by the marvellous Terry Scott, who appeared in six of the Carry On films. The movie doesn't have a straightforward plot line. It consists of a string of highly amusing sketches, which works just fine, as it did with the similarly structured carry on regardless from 1960. Terry, in the role of Terry, gets matched up with the prim and proper Jenny Grubb, who's portrayed by the stunning Imogen Hassel. Jenny's family are very Victorian and rather austere in their ways, and it's only through flat sharing with the more liberated Sally Martin that Jenny blossoms into a vibrant, sexy woman. Sally is portrayed by the captivating Jackie Piper, who was making her second of four appearances in a carry-on movie. As a result of a mix-up, it is Sally who winds up dating the endearingly innocent Bertie Muffet. It's a pity that Jackie's real name wasn't featured on the opening credits. It's Jacqueline Crump, a name true to the nature of the series, if I ever heard one. And as for Snooty Percival, he finds that Sophie, from Wedded Bliss, has set her sights on him. However, his lovesick housekeeper, Miss Dempsey, played by an hilarious Patsy Rowland, has designs on him herself. The spirited Charles Hawtrey appears in Carry On Loving as quite possibly the world's most unlikely private investigator. The type who cuts holes in newspapers to spy on you. Shooting began on this picture at Pinewood Studios on the 6th of April and was completed by the 15th of May 1970. 
Windsor, in Berkshire, was used for location work. Richard O'Callaghan, whose mother was the celebrated character actress Patricia Hayes, landed the role of Bertie Muffet due to the fact that he was spotted playing pretty much the same character in the play Three Months Gone at the Duchess Theatre in the West End. The movie's closing scene, a glorious food fight at a wedding reception, took three days to film. What with several faces having to be hit with countless cakes, the set dresser, Peter Howitt, did not want anyone to be affected by artificial cream. So large quantities of the real stuff was used, and the place truly stank of it by the end of filming. Sidney James as Sidney Bliss, whose approach to women is wet but very effective. Have you wet your trousers? Eh? Oh, oh yes. Well, I mean, I went in feet first, didn't I? And my shirt. Then we'd better have it off, hadn't we? Kenneth Williams as Percival Snooper, an expert on the ups and downs of married life. Well, Henry, you heard Mr. Snooper's advice. Do you think we should try it? If you want to, Emily, but personally, I don't think a pair of steps is going to be the answer. Charles Hawtrey as James Bensop, a very special investigator. Joan Sims as Esme Crowfoot. She ah! falls for men in a big way, just as they do for Hattie Jakes. Bernard Breslau as Gripper Burke, an all-in wrestler who certainly met his match. <laughs> Terry Scott as Terry Philpott. Jackie Piper as... Sally Martin, unknown star of stage, screen and television, pictured in her home with everything about her but her clothes. Terry. <gasps> oh, sorry, Jenny. I didn't know you were here. I didn't know you were here. It's all right. I'm going out. As soon as I find my blue sweater, anyway. With talented newcomers Imogen Hassel as Jenny Grubb, Richard O'Callaghan as... Bertram Muffet. Muffet? Well, we'll have to find you a crumpet to go with that, won't we? <laughs> the exceptionally beautiful Imogen Hassel had a life that was full of ups and downs, and one which ended all too soon. She was born in Woking, in Surrey, on the 25th of August, 1942. Her father was the poet and actor... Christopher Vernon Hassel. Theatre work led to Imogen appearing in both television and film parts. On the small screen, she appeared in such shows as The Saint on three separate occasions, The Avengers, The Champions, the pilot episode of The Persuaders, and in Jason King. On the big screen, her work included eye-catching roles in the Long Duel from 1967, Incense for the Damned from 1970, El Condor also from 1970, and When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth yet again from 1970. Carry On Loving supplied Imogen with her only appearance in the franchise. Likewise, When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth was the only time she ever worked with Hammer. Even so, I'm glad she's part of both of these iconic movie institutions. Failing relationships and the tragic passing of her daughter Melanie just four days after her birth in 1972 led poor Imogen on a downward spiral. She passed away from an overdose at the age of 38 on the 16th of November 1980. Truly saddening. And yet Imogen remains so vital, so alive in this film. The picture's original title was Carry On Courting, and in a humorous nod to how movies can have alternative titles, this film displays a few of them in the opening screen credits, such as It's Not What You Feel, It's The Way That You Feel It, and Two's Company, But Three's Quite Good Fun Too, also, it's just one thing on top of another. Not much room for ambiguity with any of them. It's great to know that Sid and Sophie's phony computer was originally built by Jerry Anderson's Century 21 Productions for his groovy science fiction series UFO. And returning to Carry On Regardless, it's worth pointing out that the Job Seekers Agency room in that picture was the same one used 
for the matrimony agency in this film. It's a crying shame that Ute Stensgaard, the beautiful bloodsucker from Hammer's Lust for a Vampire, had her scene deleted before the movie's release. In a film replete with single entendres, the queuing public knew exactly what to expect, especially when you consider the poster's tagline, the carry-on gang joined the permissive society. As per usual, Gerald Thomas directed the movie and Eric Rogers naturally provided the engaging music. Following a London screening on the 3rd of November, Carry On Loving went on general release on the 20th of November 1970. And the movie continues to cast its loving spell. I'm Stephen Archibald and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within. If you've liked what you've heard, you can listen to, or even download for free, more episodes of my podcast from iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, or a host of others. Thanks once again for listening, and bye-bye for now.